Hello, YouTube Blade Lovers. This old sword back at you with yet another new review. And as you can see, today we've departed from some of the other brands to bring you a brand you may or may not be too familiar with, Browse Blades. And um, Browse Blades is the... Uh, brainchild, shall we say, of Jason Browse, who uh, is a knife designer and knife maker. And he's had nearly 10, in, 10 years experience in CNC machining. This is from their webpage. He spent a lot of time in his father's shop growing up. And by his mid-teens, it actively, was actively helping out with production. So, um, Jason's background um, began in designing knives with a biomechanical use as practiced by one of his favorite artists, a Brazilian painter and tattooist named Lango. So um, it is a surrealistic style of art that combines elements of machines and robotics with organic animal features. And so Jason was intrigued by that style of art, and he began to design some fantasy knives, and um, later some very practical knives for um, military use and uh, EDC. So uh, you can read up on Jason Browse on your own, but interesting background. I don't want to spend too much time on it here. We're already a couple minutes into the video. But what we have in this small box that is a very unlikely looking box for a knife is the SSF SW and we have a smallish knife that fits easily in the hand and looks rather friendly and innocuous until we open it up and we find a very unusual design and we'll take a look at this in just a moment and kind of how that functions but first let's get some measurements for you I'm going to start off with the blade stock today and uh, a very interesting jimping. We're going to take our reading here. And we have a thick 4.7 millimeters. Let's take it down by the flipper. Getting a little more there. I think it'd be safe to call it 5 millimeters, just under 5 millimeters. And let's see what we've got for weight on this bad boy. I'm going to slide it up into a viewable zone. Let's close it up. And we got a pretty stout 4.3 ounces for a knife this size, a little on the heavy side still under five ounces and what have we got for an overall on this guy it is short we go from tip directly to tail we've got six and three-eighths we got a blade to the handle of roughly two and three quarters. We got a cutting edge of two and not quite a quarter. 
since we've got a little bit of a extended choil area there. So deep carry clip, very nice. Uh, nice branding on it, I think. Rather than a name, we've got the uh, company logo. G10. Oh yeah, one more measurement, right? One more. Handle thickness, and it's going to be a thicky. Let's change over to millimeters for this, or rather inches, sorry. Yeah, 0 0.6, 0 0.61. Pretty chunky handle, but it does help you fill the hand. Um, so grip-wise, we can hold it point down very comfortably. And it's pretty functional, although the point does not run on center. It's below center. Uh, I would say you can sort of use this in a karambit sort of a fashion. And I can get four fingers on the knife, small as it is. Can't quite touch the pommel with the thumb, but that's okay. It can go here. So I can get a good grip that way. And you can get a conventional grip. Very aggressive jimping. It's very interesting with the... Uh, the milling crosswise and longitudinal creates these little squares that are quite aggressive but you know they grab without tearing up your thumb too much so this could be a very good knife for working on a surface to score to cut that type of thing and can go a little deeper as well now the hole you can place your index finger through the hole and get a really secure grip that isn't uh, isn't going to drop out of your hand very easily we can move the middle finger up to the choil safely and still have a good grip. We can place the index finger in the uh, choil area and the thumb on top for yet another grip. Of course, in this position, I wouldn't, I f it feels a little more comfortable. Yeah, that feels pretty comfortable there. So if we lock it in like that, you can see you don't have a whole lot of blade but you've got a cross palm grip you've got a jabbing style grip and you've got a strafing raking clawing kind of grip pretty handy so the silent soldier as this is called has a custom version that is fairly more expensive i think 200 or over this is the import line and there are several members of that import line from Browse Blades in D2. I didn't mention that. And there are no markings on the blade. It's a stonewash finish. Very, as we would say, um, sterile. Devoid of markings except for the logo on the clip. Nothing else. But it is D2. It's an import. So I'd suspect either Taiwan or China. I'm not sure. Um, G10 handles with a very good uh, grippy pattern here. Doesn't grab you very much. And this slides in and out of the pocket quite easily, albeit it's a thick one. So you may feel more of a lump than a skinnier knife. Clip is switchable, very nice, to the left side 
from the right. So for about, oh, 40 bucks or so, you've got an interesting little knife that has multiple uses, carries very small, and yet is very strong, has a positive flipper, and that is the Silent Soldier from Browse Blades. I hope to do at least one more of the Browse Blades uh, import line coming up soon. Uh, they make an excellent karambit called the Enforcer, and uh, you can look for that over the next week or so. This old blade, signing out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.